not sure why the countdown is not.
Speaking of a pantry, the food bank of Lehigh Valley is still collecting. Jan is here, her trunk is open. So if you have brought any non-perishables for the food bank, please drip, give those to Jan after the service. You can also at any time drop those off over here at the door for the Narthex to Fellowship Hall, or you can go to Cottage Crafters across the street. They will still take it. All kids, ages as young as you care to, to senior high, please meet at the playground after the service is over and you will be given your Easter materials and, and a lot of good stuff. So all kids, any age, up through senior high school, meet over in the playground after the service. One last thing, we've discovered that uh, Zoom is not real conducive to working here in the portico. <laughs> is it, Scott? So this is the last Sunday that we will be Zooming the worship service. We will be meeting in the parking lot from here on until such time as we can go inside. We will still be streaming live on Facebook, and we will attempt to stream live on YouTube as well. And the sermon via the phone will still be available each and every week. So we give, we're trying to give you as many options as possible as, so that you can worship with us. But we are just pickled tank to see everybody who's in the parking lot this morning. Welcome, 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 and thank you for coming. And this should be just a joyous worship celebration. Uh, if you got the email earlier this week, you should have brought your Easter bonnets. I brought mine. Easter bonnets are kind of a throwback to days of yore. Mine has a little help on the back end, since I don't have any help on the top end. So this then turns into a throwback to the 70s and how I wore my hair then. So everybody make sure you have your Easter bonnets on so that we can see how well you dressed up for Easter. Now, let us pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, we cannot possibly thank you enough for the gift of salvation given to us by your risen Son, our risen Savior, as we celebrate on this Easter morning. We thank you for a beautiful, beautiful day that we can come together, maybe not in your house, but at your house, that we can worship with each other. We ask that you would bless every aspect of this worship service and that every piece of it would touch our hearts in the way that you would inspire it to speak to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. We greet the dawning brightness of this special day with hopes renewed. We have known grief and sorrow, loss and tears, fear and failure. Meet us here, living Christ, for we need this time of resurrection. We need your healing presence. We need your word of greeting that welcome, welcomes us into the community of faith in spite of our doubts and faithful, faithlessness. You are the great teacher. We have come today to learn from you. We want to be your disciples. Amen. junior choristers, Junie, Asher, Annie, and Poppy. We are lucky to have such beautiful singers in our midst. Today is Easter. Does anyone know what's different about today than any other day? He is risen! <laughs> you know, that's been a greeting in Christian churches for years. When we would come to church on Easter Sunday, we would greet each other and say, he is risen. And the person back would say, he is risen indeed. And when we come to the children's time, we want all of us, all of us children of God, to remember that he died on the cross so that we would have eternal life, which seems like kind of a strange concept that we would never die. Well, we'll never die in our spiritual life because Jesus died to bring us salvation. And he is the only one who could do that. I can't think of anyone else who ever rose from the grave. I don't think it's happened before, but on Easter morn, it happened. So I want you guys to remember that Jesus rose from the grave. He was crucified for all of us, 
And then he rose from the grave for all of us. So he is risen. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that he is risen. Thank you that men, women, and children everywhere can celebrate his risenness for all of us, for each one of us. We thank you for the children who come in our midst, for their singing and their instruments. And we thank you that we are here to celebrate together. He is risen. Amen. Sunday morning. I come to you to lead you in prayer this morning with some prayer requests. We did hear from Pastor Marty, wanted to tell you that his surgery went well. He came home the very next afternoon. He has some restrictions, um, but he is blessed, and he wanted us to know that he is feeling blessed and that he needs the message of resurrection today as well as the rest of us. Other prayer requests that I have for you. Dave Goodall, who recently had surgery, 
Cindy Burhouse, still at the Lehigh, Lehigh Center. Doug Fisher wanted us to know that Bruce is back in the hospital. Shannon's sister, Amber, you remember we prayed for her last week. She's recovering from burns. Sharon Kramer is recovering from her cancer surgery. She is doing well, but the recovery is, as you know, long and sometimes painful. And we want to pray for Sue, who is Diane's daughter. She will be having a partial knee replacement. If you know of other prayer requests, hold them in your heart and bring them to the Lord at this time. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you have told us that if we bring our prayers to you, you will hear them and you will answer as you are able. We know, O oh Lord, you to be the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great physician. So we bring to you our sick and our weary we bring ourselves, sometimes crushed under the burdens of the weak. And yet today we come in celebration. He is risen, he is risen indeed. And we come with hope and hopefulness, knowing that Jesus has risen from the grave. He is there for us, he is here for us. We lift all of our friends and family whose names we have lifted. We lift them into your heart, O oh Lord. There are some whose names we have not mentioned, but you know who they are and you know how we carry them with us. There have been losses this week of friends, family members, neighbors. We pray for them and their families. Remember a young police officer who died at the Capitol in our nation's Washington, D.C. Oh Lord, we live in a world that is hungry for justice and mercy. If we might be your instruments of justice and mercy, call on us. Give us that word that we might do all that you have for us to do. We are thankful for the gifts that we have, although sometimes we don't seem so. But we are thankful and we are grateful that we can be here in this beautiful parking lot, gathered together to worship you. It is not our sanctuary in our building, O oh Lord, but it is our sanctuary today where we lift up our praises and our alleluias. Thankful to be here, thankful to be together. But remembering all the time that we are still under a pandemic that although we love seeing each other and waving to each other, the embraces and the handshakes and the hugs are for another time. But we thankful for the opportunity to see each other and to be together in our new sanctuary for this while. Be with us and be with our family and friends as we celebrate this holy day of Easter. Grateful, hopeful, and always looking to the future as we in the interim are known to do. But we know that you have selected a person who will come to be the pastor of this church in your time. When we are ready, when you know us to be prepared, this person will come to us and will minister here. We ask these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts praying not that our will be done, but that your will be done in all things. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. This morning, I'll be reading the scripture from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Jesus has risen. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. And so ends the reading of his word. Happy Easter, everyone. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So there are many stories of the resurrection that Easter morning. They all come to the same conclusion, the tomb was empty, but they come to it at different ways. The Gospel of Mark, which Judy read for us, the ending of the Gospel of Mark, ends very abruptly, but almost every Bible has a little PS in it, if you will, and it gives in italics or in a footnote what might have conspired after the scripture. Some of the other scriptures go on more, but we want to end, our scripture ends with verse 8. The Message Bible, which is the current, uh, more formal, uh, informal language, says they got out as fast as they could besides themselves, their heads swimming. Stunned, they said nothing to anyone. But you can read in your own Bible the footnotes come after that. In the end, the women are frightened. Go and tell. Are you kidding me? Let's just get the heck out of here. As my New England people would say, get out of here. Let's just go. But thankfully, someone did stay to tell the good news and did, in some of the passages of the gospel, they will, uh, you will hear, uh, let me read from Luke chapter 24. In, um, in the Message Bible, it tells us that on the first day of the week, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of their master. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck, and they bowed down and worshiped. The men said, why are you looking for the living one here in the cemetery? He's not here, he's raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners killed on the cross and in three days rise up? Hmm. Then they remembered Jesus' words. They left the tomb, and this is the important part of this story to me. And they broke the news of all of this to the 11 and the rest. The apostles didn't believe a word of it, thought they were making it all up. Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes. He walked away puzzled, shaking his head. 
every year when I have the opportunity to preach on Easter, the Easter message is women were the first priests of the good news of Jesus Christ. So if any of you would seek to deny us a pulpit, remember, we told it first. It would do you all well to remember that. Tell all your friends, the first ministers of the gospel of the good news were women. Go and tell. And they did. And guess what? No one believed them. Now that's a real surprise, isn't it? And yet they persevered. And finally, someone went and looked inside the tomb. Now you've got to know that tombs in those days were not like tombs today. In those days, uh, you remember, if you remember the story, Josephus of Arimathea had an empty tomb that he offered up to Jesus Christ for them to lay his bones in there. Because you see, a tomb wasn't used just once. The tomb was used for the dead body until it had turned into just bones and sand. And then those bones were shuffled into a bone box. I'm sure it has a formal name, which I don't know. And then another person was laid there. So the tomb got many uses. And Joseph offered his tomb up. And, and when they came and they rolled the stone away, Jesus wasn't there. Can you imagine his surprise? Can you imagine the surprise of all of the disciples? Because they had forgotten that he told them he was going to rise again. Because as I told you in, your ch in the children's story this morning, no one had ever done it before. And no one has done it since. He is risen. What does that mean? We saw him hanged on the cross in agony. We watched him march through the streets carrying his own cross on which he would hang. We watched them pound nails into his hands and his feet and we saw the blood dripping. We heard the soldiers mocking him making fun of him and calling him, ha ha, the king of the Jews. Look at you now, Mr. King. You can't even save yourself. The king of the Jews, indeed. And then we go back to the empty tomb. In the Gospel of John, in chapter 20, tells us in chapter chapter 20 verse 11 Mary stood outside the tomb weeping as she wept she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there dressed in white one at the head and the other at the foot of where Jesus body had been laid they said to her woman why do you weep they took my master she said and I don't know where they put him. After she said that she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to her. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She, thinking he was the gardener, said, Mister, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can care for his body. And Jesus said one word. He spoke one word to her. He said, Mary. He called her name. He called her name and by the calling of her name, she recognized him as her teacher. And she said, Rabboni, Rabboni. One word. One word he spoke to her, and then he said, don't hold on to me. I haven't yet ascended to my father. And then she went and told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And then the next story we read is on the evening when they gathered together in the upper room, and they were so terrified, they had the door locked for fear someone would come in. 
and they celebrated together and there he was in the midst of them. And how did they know him? They knew him by the breaking of bread. Small acts, calling her name, breaking the bread. He rose from the grave. That was an incredibly wonderful, awesome thing. And yet these small acts are how we know him. Calling her name, breaking the bread. He is risen indeed. And so this day we celebrate that risen Lord. We celebrate that he comes to us. He comes to us in the breaking of the bread. He comes to us calling our name. But we have to be quiet and still to hear it. We have to be willing to go to that empty tomb and look in and see that there's nothing there. And to wait in silence and hear his voice calling our name. That's what we're waiting for this day. We've had the celebration of the resurrection. He is risen, he is risen indeed. And now we wait. We wait for him to call our name and to give us our assignment. Our assignment for service to him. So this day I would remind you that he is risen. He is risen indeed. But the story just begins now for each of us. Let us pray. Oh Lord, you have brought us to the empty tomb. You have brought us to that place where we look in and we see the grave clothes lying there. And we wait. We wait for your voice to call us so that we will know you again and again and again. So we pray this day for silence in our souls and our hearts as we come to this table remembering what you gave us and giving back a portion of that. We pray in your name. Amen. Jesus. 
Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach gladly bear. Then I'll call on some day to my home far away, where his glory I'll forever share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay Anyone's going to come and get us. We are celebrating the risen Lord and we do it wonderfully and openly. And so I invite you to celebrate this day communion. You have received a communion cup with your juice and your wafer. So first we will take the bread and we will bless it. As he did on that night. That's how they knew who he was. He came into the room, a ghostly apparition, if you will. And he broke the bread and he gave thanks. Oh Lord, we give thanks for this bread, representing the body which was broken for us. We do this in his name, amen. Ministering to you in his name, I invite you now to take your bread. So took a cup and he blessed the cup this blood this cup represents the blood shed for us in the remission of our sins may it bring us to a place of humility and holiness amen Minister to you, I minister to you in his name. I invite you to share this cup, the blood shed for the remission of the sins of many. Drink ye all of it. Let us pray. Oh Lord, as we have met at the empty tomb, as we have celebrated the meal, Let us be silent for a moment and remember it was for us that he died and also for us that he lives. Scripture tells us that when they had sung a hymn, they left that upper room. And so we will hear our closing hymn sung for us because he lives.
the key of unconditional love is passed on to us. We have seen the risen Christ. We are changed. We have been chosen as witnesses to resurrection. Amen and amen. Thank you.